Okay, my apologies for not actually being in class right now, but I am around the building. Uh, be good, because I'm the VP today. Uh, I want to talk concavity right now, and so concavity is a follow-on. Uh, it's a follow-on from increasing and decreasing. So really what we're going to do here is we're going to talk the second derivative test. So concavity, um, which is sort of our second derivative test. Test. Um, so, uh, what is today? It is March 24th, I guess, for when you guys are going to see this. March 24th of 2022. Um, yeah, so let's talk concavity. So, if you recall, um, you know, if you have a function, uh, y equals f at x. Um, we know that the first derivative, so dy by dx, uh, or f prime at x, um, this tells us about slopes of the function. Um, and so the slopes tell us whether it's increasing or decreasing. Um, so increasing or decreasing. Um, yeah, and so we use that by, you know, if we think about a function, it looks something like this, that, you know, we can find where those slopes are zero and where those slopes are zero we can find what's eligible to be max and mins in theory we talked also about um, if we had like a, a cubic style function right so we had a function that looked like this we could also get a slope of zero right there and it's neither a max nor a min but it's actually a point of inflection um yeah so what I want to talk about now is we're, we're, we're going towards curve sketching. Um, and I also talked about the idea of, of there is a third way to decide whether um, those critical points are maxes or mins or, or something else. And the third way involves dealing with concavity. So when we get to that, uh, hopefully you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, so for curve sketching, I want to kind of just revisit. So imagine that we consider, um, so if we consider f prime at x, um, and I'm going to kind of separate this into two cases. Oh, that's the wrong button. Oh, I don't have it set up here. Sorry. Um, I'm using a different laptop than I would normally use. Um, yeah. All right. So consider the following. So consider f prime at x. Um, if f prime at x um, is greater than zero, so that it's positive, we know that it is increasing. Now, we don't know exactly what it looks like, but you know, if we were to zoom in onto an area of the curve, it could be um, like straight up linear increasing. It could be growing increasing. It could be this is kind of a weird one. It kind of seems like it's a decreasing increasing because it's getting less steep. But all of those, if you were to drop a tangent line on them, uh, what they would be is they would have a positive slope, right? Um, and so then, you know, let's contrast that with this side up here. So if f prime of x is less than zero, we know the function is decreasing. And so if it's decreasing, it can decrease linearly, right? Uh, like that. Uh, or it can decrease sort of like this, or it could decrease like this, right? Those are all different ways that the function could decrease. Um, so, you know, f prime at x tells us if it's positive, it's going to look, you know, something of this ilk. If it's negative, it's going to look something of this ilk. Um, now, f double prime at x, hence the second derivative test. So consider f double prime at x. And let's kind of think about what this means is this, instead of it being the rate of change at f at x, this is the rate of change of f prime x. So we have to kind of think about this one a little bit differently. So again, I'm going to draw a couple of examples here that hopefully will kind of highlight and, and get us thinking about this. Um, so imagine that we had, you know, a good old smiley face parabola, right? So consider a parabola like this, um, and then over here, we're going to have, you know, not a smiley face parabola. We're going to have a Jamie parabola, sad one. 
Um, right, so imagine that we had this. And imagine that we drew on a series of tangents. So I'm going to grab a different color. Um, so imagine that we drew a tangent here, and then we drew a tangent here, and then we drew a tangent here, and you know we just draw on a whole big sequence of tangents. Now let, let's kind of think about what this was going on. So maybe this one has a slope. So if I think about slopes, maybe you know that's a slope of negative eight. That's a slope of negative six. This is kind of looking like a slope of negative one. This is slope of like a slope of maybe zero point five. This is a slope of, I don't know, like four, and this is a slope of, let's say, seven. So if if we follow across those slopes, um, we should notice here that the slope values themselves are increasing, right? So as we go left to right on this function, it goes from quite a negative number to a less negative to, you know, barely negative to a positive and to a, you know, subsequently growing positive. So, you know, we are progressing on a number line from left to right. The slope values themselves are increasing. And you can imagine that we could go through a similar exercise over here. We could do all of these things. Um, and what would happen is, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, kind of get some representatives, like, oh, maybe that's nine, that's five, that's one, that's negative one, that's negative four, and that's negative eight, let's say. These slope values, well, they are decreasing. Okay, so keep in mind, we're not talking position here, we are talking slopes. So as we go left to right on this function, the slopes are increasing, right? Um, so let's kind of interpret that. What that means is that f prime at x, which is the slope, right? f prime at x is increasing. And since f double prime at x is the rate of change of f prime at x, what that means is f double prime at x is positive because the rate of change is increasing on our slopes. That means that f double prime at x is positive. You know, the follow on here, the natural conclusion is that f prime at x here is decreasing. Okay, which means then that f double prime at x is negative. Which is kind of cool because, you know, if if we just think in isolation, right, like if all I think about is, is this chunk right here, right, like if I'm only exploring this piece, that whole thing, right, inside this entire, I was going to say square, but rectangle-ish, um, the slope itself, slopes are negative, right? And that whole box, it's decreasing that whole time. However, the slopes, while being negative, are actually increasing. So even though the function is going, you know, down, I'm, I'm kind of motioning air quotes here, the function is going downwards, the slopes themselves are actually getting bigger. So the second derivative would be positive, okay? And, you know, if, if I look over here, I should use a different color whatever. Um, if I look over here, these are all, so maybe I'll say it like that so I can tell, these are all slopes are positive, and f double prime at x is increasing because our slopes are increasing. So the slope itself being either increasing or decreasing doesn't necessarily, or not not necessarily, it doesn't at all indicate what the sign of the second derivative is, right? Over here, right, like in this area here, the slopes are all positive, right? So these are m value is greater than zero. That's a terrible zero. Let's get rid of that guy. Uh, that wasn't how to get rid of it. Uh, I don't have these keys set up. Uh, the slope is greater than zero, but they're getting smaller as we progress left to right. 
So that means that the second derivative is negative. So even though the slope is positive, the second derivative is negative. So we need to be careful and, and not kind of conflate the two ideas that, that whether the slope is positive or negative is, is sort of immaterial to what the second derivative's sign is going to be, right? So we need to be really, 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 really aware of that. So what this can lead us to now, hold up, I'm coming from our space already. Oh my gosh, I'm writing to me. Um, can, I, can I put it to the right? Let's look. Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, I'm gonna go back up here. Um, so I will kind of put a more, um, so I can save this note for you guys later to look at. Um, so second page, so this is page two. Um, what we can kind of make a conclusion is, is that if we're ex examining just concavity, because that's what we're, we're talking about here, um, is if F double prime at X is greater than zero, what we have is this is this is considered um, concave up. And generalizing what it looks like is it kind of looks like a smiley. Okay, it's positive, and so we have that we have a concave up, right? Whereas if we have that, oh, hit the wrong freaking button again. Dang it. Um, if we have a do I still have some of the wrong color? There we go. Uh, if we have f double prime at x is less than zero, what this is, is it's going to be that it is concave down and it is going to be a frowny, right? So concave up is going to be smiley and concave down is going to be frowny. And it's important that like it's it's the concavity, it's kind of the 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 curvature nature of it that's important because you know again don't be confused by the slope. Like if we just look over here, right? Like in this area here, the slope is negative. Here the slope is negative, zero positive, and here the slope is positive. That whole thing is concave up because it's you know, it's it's got the smiley nature to it. So if I'm going to kind of generalize it, it is it it concaves up. Whereas over here, again, we have a positive slope going into a zero slope, going into a negative slope, right? So we have all the different you know possibilities of slope from positive to zero to negative, but this guy is going to be concave down because it has a frowny nature to it. Now, if f double prime at x is zero. Right, so we had f double prime at x is, is is positive, it's concave up. f double prime at x is less than zero or negative, it is concave down. When f double prime at x is equal to zero, more often than not, but not always, we usually have a point of inflection. or a P O I. Okay, so an example of that was if you think about a cubic, right? Um, so if we think about y equals x cubed, uh, and we you know do our, our best diagram that we can of y equals x cubed, it's gonna look sort of like that, this, right? Um, so over here, this would be concave down, right? Because it's, you know, if you kind of continue drawing it, it would be a frowny. Um, and this over here is concave up. Which, you know, so just to make sure we understand, f double prime at x over here would be greater than zero. f double prime at x here would be less than zero. Right there is where it goes from being concave down to concave up. So f double prime at x would equal zero. So f double prime at x is not a guarantee that you have a point of inflection. So it's one of those, it's not an if and only if statement. So, you know, I'm, I'm gonna kind of say it here. So if f double prime at x is equal to zero, it's probably a point of inflection, but not for sure. 
Whereas if it is a point of inflection, it is guaranteed that F double prime at X is equal to zero, right? So this F double prime at X is a superset that includes points of inflection, um, but points of inflection are always gonna have F double prime at X equal to zero, but not all F double prime at X equals zero is going to be a point of inflection. So I wanna offer that counter example right now. So how could F double prime at X be equal to zero and, and not be a point of inflection? Well, consider the following. So consider the function um, y equals x to the fourth, right? And you might not know what that looks like. That's okay. It, it sort of looks, I'll just use the wrong button again. Um, it looks an awful lot like a quadratic, um, but it has a like a bit flatter base to it than a quadratic, but you know, you'd, you'd be hard pressed to not know that it was a quadratic. Um, and so let's think, so uh, if we did the first derivative, so dy by dx, it would be equal to 4x cubed. Um, and then if we did the second derivative, so d2y by dx squared, uh, it would be 12x squared. So if I set that equal to zero and solve, right? So if I did, you know, I'm gonna let d2y by dx equal zero to find POIs or eligible POIs really, because we don't know for sure they're gonna be. So I'd set that equal to zero. So zero equals 12 X squared and then solve. Well, you would get X equals zero, but pretty clearly, hopefully I can, you can tell by looking at this, that this thing is concave up, right? It is, it is, it is concave up everywhere, right? Uh, you know, it, it's kind of got a smiley and got a smiley, but I have that the second derivative F double prime of X is equal to zero. So. So this is kind of the counter example that if the second derivative is equal to zero, it's not a sure thing that it's going to be a point of inflection. Um, and so what we have to do then is we need to actually, you know, go ahead and, and, and actually do the second derivative test. So I'm gonna stop this lesson right here and we're gonna do a second one. So don't think that you're done yet, um, but I just wanna kind of reset everything and save that video. So I'll be back in a minute.